That's how we own it. What's up, family? I'm Tamika D. Mallory. And it's your boy, my son, the general. And we are your hosts of Street Politicians, the, the place, place where, where the streets, streets and politics meet. It's good. What's going on? <laughs> See, I did it first this time. Okay. Yeah, you know, so, every now and then. Every how you now feel? and then. So you got your until freedom. I do have my good until freedom. You know, I, you know, I wear my until go, freedom. Go, go to untilfreedom.com, get your little sweatsuit hat. Yep, support the movement. That's and right. I wear my sweatsuit as fashion. Yeah, because it's fashionable. And they feel good. That's right. People love these sweatsuits. They love them. Springtime is coming. There's new colors, hot pinks and pretty blues and purples. Good stuff. Go to untilfreedom.com. I have allergies, and it's really, really bad. It's bad. Yeah, you've been coughing this season. At first, I thought you had... You know, the wrong COVID again. Mm -hmm. but, you know, yesterday we took a test, so we've I know taken you tests every two times, two in, the times in the last week. week so. Yes, so she ain't got the Rona, but that I little, don't have the Rona. Get a little cough. But people should get the antibody test because I took antibody test yesterday, which you chickened out and didn't take that. Yeah, I'm just tired. Of you got your little negative. They out here, pr they pricking fingers. They and prick all that. your finger, and they picked hers twice. Oh my that. God, because she couldn't get the blood out of one finger, so she had to go prick another one. And my finger's still, like, it's a lot of, it's, it's sensitive in that spot. Mm. This is a real prick. You know, there's pricks for some things, but then this one has, like, some kind of plastic, and they literally push something down, and it's a thick little prick into your finger. It's a lot going on. It hurt. But what I, the reason why I was so adamant about getting it done, and it's funny because in New York, Everyone that I know that has to hook up with COVID testing, none of them know where to get an antibody test. It's one place that I know to get an antibody test is in Kentucky. Yeah, in Louisville, Kentucky. In Louisville, Kentucky. And we, get, and we get a test there every time we go. Every time we go to Kentucky, a black woman, she tests us on our way in and on our way out sometimes in different events we have going on. She tests us and um, from the Hope Wellness Center, the Hope Wellness Center. So if you're in Louisville, Kentucky, check out the Hope Wellness Center. You have to uh, call to schedule an appointment. And if you don't have insurance, you have to pay your $30, $30 I think, per yeah. person to get tested. It's very important that we support black folks and that you don't ask them to like cut you a deal Go there and pay. Or you could go stand online at the other places where it's wrapped around the corner and you just wait until it's your turn. That's life. But anyway, she did the antibody test. And the last time we took it, it was like a talk of the whole office because they said my antibodies were so high that they, they were like, wow, this is, it was, wasn't the mother, it was the grandmother or something. Like it was a real, real strong level of antibodies. And the, all of the medical professionals were in communication about how high the levels were. So that was a while because the last time we just got COVID, I didn't get an antibodies test. So now we're talking about a few months. So now I'm like, dang, you know, let me get it again because I'm sure that the antibodies sort of died down. And then yesterday they were like still very strong. And I had COVID so in September good. and still my antibody. I really must have. I told y'all I was sick. Nobody believed me. Well, I mean, some people's bodies just react different. Like I, I don't, I've taken a, the um, antibody test and never had it. So I never had no antibodies. So maybe well, you didn't it was, take it, was it in after. a, yeah, it was several months couple months after. But anyway, you know, speaking of tests and things like that, R.I.P. to DMX. Man. Yeah, man. It's, you know, we, lo we lost one of the greats, man. It's not just... For me, it's, it's personal. DMX was a friend. A personal friend of mine's one of the first people when I started rapping and I was signed who, like, kind of took me under his wing. Yeah. You know, DMX. I was in Vegas with DMX. The only time I ever smoked weed in my life, I tell the story, is with DMX. And we was just in the hotel room, me, him, and my manager, and we just chilling and we drinking Hennessy. I'm 21 years old, and he's just telling me stories, and he's telling me how to rhyme and how to have this level of me my melody and how to change flows. And I'm just listening to him, and then he's telling me about the game, how the songs he put out now, he wrote 10 years ago. Like wow. all of the songs that was on his album, he wrote 10 years ago. Wow. And he and he did it specifically to prove to people that he been dope. Mm. You know, he didn't change the songs or nothing. He wrote these songs 10 years ago. And came to the industry and just got new beats and put out and came out with five times platinum. So he's telling me these five story. times platinum. First album, you know. So when he's telling me this story, wait a minute, one album went five times platinum. He had two albums that went. I think 
Both of them were five. Or I think one of them were five and one were three. So he sold like he sold somewhere between eight and ten million mm. back to back albums within six months. He released them. And they, wow. Yeah, I think he, I think nobody's ever done that in history. Wow. Wow. So you know, he was a musical genius. So he taught me a lot about music. He gave me a lot of life lessons. You know, he's somebody that I really looked up to, and he had a lot of um, a lot of respect for me as well. You know, he put. He used to tell people, yo, he's the truth. You know, so he one of the first people that really motivated me in this game. So, yeah, hearing that he passed was really difficult, man. So, shout out to his family. My respects, my regards to his family. Sleep in peace. To the GOAT, the dog, the greatest entertainer i ever seen. DMX was the only entertainer that i ever seen perform for an hour with no hype, man. Mm. And you you know how hype his songs are. So right. there's nobody else on the stage with him <laughs> going side to side. It's just him in the mic jumping around, getting the, the crowd all hype. I, I watched him perform to where he came off and he almost fell out. Mm. And they had to wrap him in a blanket. He was completely exhausted, but he would leave every inch of himself on that stage. Mm. You know, so you, you'll never get another DMX. There'll never be another one like him. The authenticity that he faced. I watched that man go to projects. Literally, we pulled up. He would say, let's go to the projects. Where's the projects at? And go to the projects in any hood in America. No security or nothing. Everybody coming outside, hugging him. Like family. He's yeah. he ain't nervous. He ain't nothing. They just love that man because they sense that authenticity in him. So, man, know. it's so funny because as you know, we've been discussing, it wasn't long ago that I actually saw him talking to people. People were like hugging him and they were all around him. And I was like, you know, kind of like sliding past. But as a, you know, black people, it was all white folks that were trying to talk to him. They were taking pictures. And you know, when black people see each other, we'd be like, what's up? And so he saw me over white folks, like, hey. And I was like, almost gonna just wave and keep moving. But something in my spirit said, go back. And I told him that you and um, what's our Noriega was together somewhere. And he said, okay. He said, well, tell me the address. And he just left and went there and met y'all. It was so yeah, cool. But if time. I had, that's the last time, ago. just a couple months ago. But if I had just kept it moving, it would never have, y'all wouldn't have connected that day. Nope. And it was, and I just, something in my spirit said, don't just keep running. Because we always just keep running. You see people, you like, what's up? It's love and that's it. But this day... Something said no. I need to go back, and I I don't. I was at the mall hanging out with my um, girlfriends, and but something in my spirit said you go back and talk to him, and I did, and I told him to go and meet y'all, and y'all were able to hang out. Yep, he hung out, and that was the last time I seen him. He drove us home. Oh God, okay. Lord, mm. speed demon. I ain't never seen the way drive that. No. All right, Pete to the king. Actually. Yeah, that's all I could say, man. Like you know. It's a lot. When you listen to his music, you realize he was in turmoil. He was in pain. He was constantly fighting this good and evil fight, mm. you know. But and he everybody fights it. Everybody fights it. But he was so vocal about it, and that's why I think it was, you were so able to connect yes. to DMX because he actually spoke what we was thinking and what we was feeling, and he wasn't afraid to admit his faults, his weaknesses, you know, the things he done wrong. He wasn't afraid to be transparent, you know, and it's that's a very rare trait. You know, when you come, just people in general, but when you have musicians, you know, like, that have that level of connection to their fan base, it's just different, man. A lot of people love DMX, so, yes. and, and you know, I have to say that Tashira, his wife, I'm yes, not sure if they are married or divorced, they were definitely separated, but I know her very well. Uh, well, someone said, you told me that he was engaged, so I guess... That means that they are divorced, so let me be clear. Because, you know, folks, they listen and they take everything and make it something that it's not. Um, but anyway, Tashira is a great woman that I have come to know. She's God-fearing, positive. She's given me a lot of encouragement. I watched her story and the progress of growth, you know, um, from everything that they went through together, building up from, you know, wherever he started and her being there on the journey, taking care of their children. I mean, she's just a beautiful woman. So to your point, 
we want to say to uh, to DMX's family that we love all of you, sending our blessings. I have to say that my brother and sister, um, Swiss Beats and Alicia Keys, uh, I've watched them love up on DMX in a real solid, solid, solid way. Swiss was really appreciative, you can tell, to DMX for helping him along the way in his career, helping to get him started, you know, and, um, and, and, and you could tell that the two of them were his real friends, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's hard to find people that when you come to them, you could come to them in any kind of condition. You could come as your natural self and they are, they are there to pick you up. Most of the time when we have friends, we don't show back up around until we get it a little bit together. You know, in the dusty, busty time period, you kind of like stay away from everybody. You don't want people to judge you. You don't want people to see. But you know that there were moments when DMX was going through a lie. He was broken and you would still see Swiss like right there by his side, like being with him and being like, we, we coming back from any um, situation and circumstance. And I know, you know, all the Rough Riders and Wild and all of them did that. Yeah. And so he had some good people that loved him. Definitely, man. It, he was he was one of a kind, man. I watch DMX go through so many different phases, but it was always in authenticity, yeah. man. Always in the people around him. My, my brothers, DNY, these are two of the most solid people that I've ever known. You know, and they've always been by his side and always, you know, was there with guidance and, and everything for him. So I know that they're feeling this loss a lot right now. So yeah. I want to send out my love to them too, man. The whole Rough Riders camp. They yeah. embraced me like family since we was kids, man. It's just, it's a, it's, it's a, um, like a lot of people, I've been reading a lot of memes of people are saying, you know, that he's, his soul is in peace now. Mm -hmm. Soul is in rest, man. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of God's angels, man. So yeah. God had to bring him back home with him, man. Got to celebrate both the living and the dead because, um, as I saw on one of our other brother, 19 Keys page, he said that uh, there is no, Life without death, and there's no death without life. You can't understand the moment you're in without knowing where, what the other side looks like, you know. And so definitely that peace. Sometimes at 50, he was 50, and sometimes at 50, you've lived more than people that's 70, 80 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, peace like a sleeping angel. That's right. R.I.P. to DMS. To the dog. So my thought of the day today. You know, every now and then I get in my comments and I go in my DMs and I read because, you know, these are sometimes, which I'm beginning to find out, my son, there are a lot of fake people online. Like, yeah. they when don't you even go, exist. no, they exist. They have three, four, five accounts. Didn't you show me something the other day? You said they got a new thing. Yeah. What is it? How, do, what, how does it go? The new thing is the scammers. Say that you scamming so they can No, scam not them. that. I'm talking about you said if if a person starts Oh yeah. So what it is, yeah, they gotta um when you can block on Instagram now, right? So when you block somebody <laughs> We love blocking. Because that's my new thing. I don't even before I used to be block you out of here. <laughs> so now when you block somebody, you block them in any page that they may create. Oh, so when they start, so they got to go with a whole new they gotta email. They got to create everything different. In order to, they, they got to, it ain't just in five minutes, I'm just going to put another, nope. You got to get another email. You got to get all oh, maybe of a stuff. new phone number. Maybe you have to get a whole nother phone number because it, it picks up that it's a, a, a page that's from somebody that you already blocked. So shout out to Instagram, man. For that one. They're making right? it so much easier so that, to block. That's, but I, block. so now, because sometimes I start going back and forth with people and then, and a lot of times I do it. Not because I care who's on the other side. They can have two followers, no followers, be a troll or whatever. But some of the things that they say, I've heard it more than one time. And I think it's important not to leave their comment without there being a response because people do get educated in the comments. Like sometimes when I see something on Instagram that I don't understand, I go and start reading the comments and then I'm like, oh, that's what happened or that's who died or this and that and the third. So sometimes the education needs to be there. But, um, and so I found out it's a lot of trolls. But I do read and there are real people who have real thoughts and real feelings. And I noticed that 
during certain times, I get attacked by men. I, you know, often, often there are women who, of course, come on my page and they have things to say. Um, and most, you know, sometimes they might be a little rude and disrespectful, but the men are blatantly, they call me witches, they call me bitches, they, um, you know, I mean, they say just really, really bad things to me. And I noticed that I had a spike again after the Cadillac commercial came out um, in men saying that I was um, participating in the divide between the black man and the black woman. Mm -hmm. And my thought of the day or the, or the the question I have for you, because you be out there, like you you be out there with the hoteps, you be out there with the street dudes, you be out there with the bourgeois, the black bourgeoisie, so you know. And I've had people, that's the other thing, from different walks of life, it's, it's all different types, ask me, well, I don't understand why there had to be something where it was just you as a, and, and other women. So my question is, do men not think that we should celebrate Women's History Month? Like, is that, is it, should we, do, you, do, do men feel like get rid of Women's History Month and like the celebration of women, we shouldn't have that? Well, I think there is, a, you know, a level of fear, you know, until you start to get a level of comfort in yourself, you know, um, black men are dealing with so much right now. We, we realize that an enemy has an agenda to get rid of us, you know, I, and I don't, and I don't ag agree with the fact that elevating black women is diminishing black men. I, I do not believe that at all. I think that narrative is false. I think it's, it's a skewed mindset. I think black women are the backbone of civilization, you know, who have been taking the back seat for so long. So to have them being elevated and acknowledge them in their strength, beauty, and all of those things at one time, and say and call them lead, let them lead, or allow them to lead, or you know give them the space to lead as they do what they naturally do. I don't think it's anything wrong with that. But I think what happens is like anything, when when men have been so used to being you know, revered and talked about in, in the front row and and the family is based on the man and all those things. And when you start to say, well, the, the woman, my mother was just as strong as my father was. You know, my father, my mother actually ran the household because she did all these things. My father went to work, he paid the bills and all that, but she made sure all these things. And when you start acknowledging that, some people feel they have a fear. They mm. fear that it diminishes them. And, and, I'll, and I'll hear you saying that a lot of black men, but there are black women who share this same thing. I've listened to some. I'm not saying it's not. I'm you know, just saying so, the a way that it is communicated to me. Yeah, and I yeah. think, and I think it's it's out of fear. I think it's out of fear. I think when black men look at how we've been, you know, we're being assassinated, you know, how we've been incarcerated, all of those things at the highest rates of any other race mm -hmm. is the black man, and then we see our our woman being elevated. You know, it's it's a fear. It's like damn, you know. And some people they have to get over that. You have to get over that fear. And there's a level of, you know, just fear. Some men are just actually scared. It ain't just fear. They're just scared because a lot of times, unfortunately, that's the only place that black men are in control. Mm -hmm. They go to work. They're working for some people. Some black men, not all. They're, you know, most of them are working for somebody. They're being beat down by the man. They're being incarcerated. And in their household, they feel like, daddy's the king. He runs this. So when you start seeing commercials that say women are gonna black women are gonna lead this nation there and there's there aren't no men, they just immediately equate it with something that's wrong. Not even they don't look at the backstory and say, well, this is black this is women's history month and black women are are beautiful women. Let's let them be elevated. Let them acknowledge their time. Let them have their time. But then they say, oh, we don't got a black we don't got a man's month. But and we don't and it's just it's a, a counter mentality. Men have been celebrated men have throughout history men have led things so when you when you look at it from the perspective just basic perspective you say it doesn't make sense but when you look at the history of what black men have dealt with and, and are even still with dealing with so, separation you know, of our families um i understand that i do but i think the challenge for me is something that um sojourner truth said a long time ago, and I would add a little bit to it. She, when she was standing before um, a group of white women at a conference, 
the biggest line that we know from Sojourn the Truth is, ain't I a woman? And the thing that I would say is, ain't I a black woman? Do I not have the right to celebrate black women because I am one? So I hear people say, oh, this feminism thing. First of all, and, and Linda Sarso explains it in the way that it is, it's best. My feminism is not connected to politics. My feminism is connected to my own spirituality and faith. And that means that I believe in the power of women and I understand the abuse that has been done to us by the world, of course, and by our men at times, right? I understand that just like we are in a position where we're breaking through the chains of racism, we also are breaking through the chains of sexism. But even as I sat as one of the highest ranking, if you will, uh, people, black women within the Women's March, my role there was to always make sure that the agenda covered the entire black family. And y'all know that because not just you, but I brought several black men along with me and forced them at that table to allow black men's voices to be heard. And I said over and over again, that, and I've said it in speeches. I mean, if you go back and listen to some of my words, which is another thing, people talk and they don't listen. They don't do research. They just talk. If you listen to some of my speeches, I have said my feminism also includes my black son. It includes the black man that I am. I don't have the luxury of leaving the black man behind. But I also understand that I have an obligation to my own womanhood, mm -hmm. not even to the greater collective. That's one thing. But my own womanhood that I recognize my greatness, the power of my grandmother and my great grandmother, and my aunties and my own mother who are staples in society. And the problem that we have. Have. The problem that we have, brethren, who may be listening, is that women have always been leading. We are now just being provided with platforms to actually talk about it. But we've always been leading. In fact, there was not, even when you think about the, the speech that Dr. King gave, um, the, the I Have a Dream speech, we know the story goes that at some point as he was speaking, Mahalia Jackson calls out, tell him about the dream, Martin, tell him about the dream. And he begins to get into the I have a dream portion, which would go on to be the most renowned words that he ever stated that the world, the world's world, world, world knows about. That was because a black woman was there pushing him and telling them, Go ahead on and give them that good stuff. You know, that's what I could imagine she would have said. You know, give yeah. them that good stuff, you know. Why is it that the that we discount what it looks like for Martin and Abernathy and other members of their team and, 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 and Reverend Jackson and Wyatt T. Walker to stop by Mary Lou's house and get a fried chicken meal, a telephone to use to call their families. That's a part of the revolution as well. Right. If they didn't have the sanctity of what a black woman was doing for them to help them along the way. And so for us not to be able to have a moment during one month to talk about that. Now, there's this other thing, right, where people will say, because you know what they do is, when they realize that what you're saying over here is right, they go, well, but you said this other thing. And, you know, we, we, we only hold other people to every word they've ever said. Mm -hmm. We don't hold ourselves to that. You don't hear people doing YouTube videos, Twitter and all of that about their own mishaps, their failures. You don't see people running yeah, down. Yeah, I messed up. Yeah, today. I messed up today. I said this. I meant to say that. You don't see them apologizing to other people when they do and say things that are wrong. That's not what happens. But okay, that's cool. That's why God made us who we are and they are who they are. And that's why they do YouTube and Twitter. And we, we actually outside. are out here changing yeah, the we, world. Yeah, we outside. Right. So, you know, that's why. But anyway, so the other thing they'll say is, so, no, but you said, you said that sexism uh, is, is, is worse than racism. And of course, if you want to lift that, right? Because I have a friend who's Hope Tepish, right? So he calls me all the time like, yo, sis, I don't know about that. 
you know, but he knows me well enough to know that, you know, who I am. So he respects me enough to come to me when he's like, yo, that feminism thing y'all got going on. I don't know. I don't know. I don't don't like this, you said. So he hits me up. And he's big on on Facebook, too. And he hits me up and he's like, yo, you know, I'm just trying to understand. And we begin to speak about the context that I was speaking in. What I was talking about, I also always call Reverend Mark Thompson. I run it by him because he, you know, he's in these worlds too. And he's like, to me, I know exactly what you're saying. The context of the conversation was talking about Kamala Harris becoming president. I was doing a TMZ interview in which um, t- they were asking me a bunch of things about the election. What do we want to see from Biden? How are we going to, you know, they're running it all down. And They got to a point where they said, well, do you believe that Kamala Harris is going to be president? So the first thing I said was she can want to be president all she wants. But unless she shows us something during her tenure as vice president, I mean, vice president. And by the way, you only have about 18 months of that because it's getting ready to be time to run for president right now. Like in a minute, they got to start picking up the steam. Mm -hmm. So I said she has a short period to show us that she's even, first of all, reconciled with some of the things that people have challenged her on in her past and that she's stepping to the table, bold, courageous, and ready to call out the system and do some real things. They, this administration has to get something done in order for her to become president. They asked me another question. I can't remember. I haven't, I've never listened to the interview again. But they said, well, you know, do you think whatever about her being president? And I said, but the thing is, Racism, I said sexism is even worse than racism in the context of her being able to become president as a black woman. You understand what I'm saying? So perhaps they're right. Maybe an extra context, line. You look in context. America picked a black man a over black a woman. A black man, exactly. Over a white uh, woman. Exactly. So you know. Exactly. So, but maybe, and which I'm, oh, you critique me. That's why, you know, you critique me and that's fine. Perhaps a line could have been added to explain that I'm speaking about a black woman in this context. But, you know, you I'm, I was in the car doing an interview with TMZ. So I'm moving, you know, trying to get my points out. So and, and, and I've never listened to it again to even know if I did say that or if I didn't. And I'm fine with the fact that people say, well, whatever. But instead, what I received was, you see, you see, uh, she's against the black man. She's against black man. How dare she? I mean, what are you talking about? How could you say that? But if you actually are looking for the positive in people rather than the negative, then you will be able to identify that I was speaking in the context of the fact that she's a black woman so the that she might be able to get as a as, well a black man we saw become president right we know that can happen might be hard to get it done again but he became president we know that but a black woman i don't believe we're anywhere near there yeah, because, because america actually preferred a black man over a white over woman. a white woman so my position is that i understand that there are black ceo males for the most part there may be like one or two there are black men who are running major hedge funds right there are black men who are regarded as some of the highest levels of our society even when you look at Congress, you look at um, even city councils and and first black mayor, black woman mayor, flat first woman this, first black woman that. We know that black women have been a step behind in terms of accomplishing some of these things that are looked upon in high society. We know that. So we understand that there must be something else that plays into it that adds a little bit of icing on the cake. So you got racism as a foundation and then you pour on top of it sexism and now you really have a problem. That was the context that I was speaking in. Could I have added a word or two? Sure. If that's what you know, you could tell somebody could tell me right now. Oh, sis, I heard, I hear what you say. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Let me tell you how you should have said it. And the next time you hear me speaking, I will whip what they said down and be saying it even better than they said it. So I get that. It's not about whether or not we could do and speak better. But if you are looking for the positive in your own people, Mm -hmm. if you're looking for a way to say, I get it. And like I said, my homeboy, he's like, "Ah, I thought that's what you were saying. 
you know, but you left out this or that and the third, right? And so if you're looking for the positive in people, you're not going to jump to, and, and, and the sad part, and I'll say this and be done with it. The sad part is that clickbait is so real that most of our people are running to make a video so that they can, and they don't realize it. They say, oh, y'all exploiting, y'all are exploiters. Well, guess what? How do you, what do you think you're doing when you use your social media platform to get clickbaits for yourself so you could pay your own bills and do the things that you by need to do us. by tearing down other people and trying to put people who are actually really trying to do something every day in a bad light? You don't think that that's freaking exploitation? Like we are so damn hypocritical. And it is absolutely ridiculous that we sit and we use our platforms to be the same damn COINTELPRO operators that have existed since every, every movement, we got to deal with the COINTELPRO operators. You're 100% right. And I tell you all the time, people who have that point of view were never your supporters, right? People who actually supported you, had faith in you, knew who you was, they don't come to you and be like, Yo, I'm going to do all of this. The people, if they confuse, like you said, your support of somebody that's cool with you can't even ask the question and say, oh, all right, I get it. Because they want, they know your heart. They believe in you. So when right. you do something that disaccordant to what they believe, then they're going to ask a question because they give you the benefit of doubt. The haters don't give you the benefit. They, right. they looking for the <laughs> aha moment. If right, you, like you said, uh, Black people don't want to see other people win. And they they say, oh, you said all of us? Now, we know we ain't talking about all. <laughs> now, you, now, you know damn well I ain't talking about every black person in the world. I'm just, It was a general statement, but it didn't it didn't mean every person. But you know what? The people that would want to find something for you. Right. Come to you. One of my friends. Because I text you. Yep. Nicole, my friend Nicole Chaplin texted me. And she, was, and she sends me text message, make sure I'm good. She's like, hey, hope everything's good with you. You know, I love everything you do. I'm supporting you. She said, I just want to let you know one thing. Not all black people don't want to see you win because right. I want to see yeah, you that's win. That's right. And when she said that, it clicked in my head. Yeah. Okay, God, I get it because right. my people want me to know that they with me and they don't want to be put into this thing and I respect that. I'm human. Right. We all make mistakes. We move a little too fast. We say something a little too fast. But when you know somebody is authentic and you know their heart and their track record has proven to be right and you actually want to believe in them, then you will. But when you don't, your whole thing is to fuck everything up. <laughs> right. Like, let me, saying? oh, that's look, it. Look, look, I see you. Got it. No, I you didn't it. say the. You said the. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They. <laughs> look, he put a Y. Look, he don't know what he's doing. So that's what we live in. And I don't have the time or even the will to try to change your mind because you're not right, going to change Right, because we are going to mess up. That's it. We, over you're and never over going, and over The people who don't again. support... I'm going to tell you this. This is young kings and queens. The people who don't support you, fuck them. <laughs> Bottom line is you, you are never going to change their minds. There's never going to be a time that you change the mind of somebody who doesn't like you. And if you do, then that's God's work. Yeah. But make sure that you continue to... Make the people proud who already support you. Make sure you continue to move along the path of the people who've been loving you and supported you, supports. So that's how you win. Everybody else, you got to exit. Sometimes you just got to go, block. Mm. Block. That's it. That's, that's what it. you got to And I'm blocking them down. And I didn't even know, I used to not even know how to block people. But finally, I asked my manager, I said, what exactly do I do? I, I said, how do I? She told me there's a way you can mute people and a way you can block them. And I just started blocking a bunch of people. I know we, we, we need to be round, um, winding this down. But this is so important. So I said, well, why would you block this person and that person? This one is nice and that one is, they just a truth teller. And this one is this and you guys are you need to be. Listen, your approach, and maybe I need to grow up. Maybe I <laughs> me need too. to. No, I do. I accept the fact that I have to say to God every night, I say, Lord, work right there. <laughs> like you get like when you get in a massage and you tell a masseuse, like, right, right, right here, help work right on that spot that helps me to grow up. At 40 years old, I know I need to grow to allow people 
to attack me, slander me, misrepresent me, use me, come with negative energy all the time. Every time I see something that I'm tagged in, it's about decoding what this one said, uh, uh, dealing with my son. Um, can't believe they did this this time. Oh, um, she said this and oh, and I'm and I, I need to work on God to allow that person to think they can still talk to me. I'm not mad at what you're doing. I'm not. I know how to find you. I know who you are. I know that at one point we were in communication and we no longer are. I know that. I, I know exactly who you are. But I'm not looking for you to ask you to stop talking about me. I'm saying talk all day and all night. I just don't have to see it. Because when I wake up in the morning, it's a list of people that I know I got to deal with all day. People need me to get things done all day, all day, all day. There's pressures coming from every different direction. This happening, that happening. Got to check on your own family. I don't need negative energy that I don't have to deal with. It's sad enough that I got to watch the George Floyd murder. It's sad enough that I got to listen to Breonna Taylor's mother cry when she gets frustrated. It's sad enough that I got to work with organizers where we don't always get along. It's sad enough that I have to look at my mother who was at one point dancing and moving around and now she's crying because she's partially paralyzed and I got to worry about my son. Your negative energy, I don't need that right now. I just don't. If I want to look for right. it, if I want to look for negative energy, I will come to your page because yeah. I know it's going to be there. It's going to be there. So, block. <laughs> block. Facts. And now we come to our Streets is Talking segment where we have our resident brand expert, Latoya Bond. Thank you, Tamika and Mice, and welcome to The Brand Market. I'm LaToya Bond, your resident brand whisperer. Today, we are gonna focus on a product for natural hair. So this week, the product that I am highlighting is Coil. You can find them at www.shopcoil.com. The reason why I love this product is because it focuses on moisture and hair growth. And if you are a naturalista, or just if you're um, a woman of color, those are two of the things that we struggle with the most. Our hair is constantly dry. No matter what we do, it seems like we can never get enough moisture. And we also struggle with hair growth. A lot of us try to grow our edges. And then because we wear so many protective styles, a lot of us deal with, with bald spots and alopecia in different areas. This product is perfect for it. It's super rich. I actually use this all the time. As you can see, my coils are popping. And they also have a scalp massager, which is great for stimulating your scalp and helping with hair growth. I wanna tell you guys how to get your products featured on the brand market. You can find me on all platforms at the BBM Agency. That's the BBM, Boy Boy Mary Agency. Click the link in the bio and it'll have instructions on how you can submit your product for consideration. Under a new stimulus bill signed by President Biden, millions of Americans have, or, or they probably have already, but they will receive a third stimulus check. The third round payments are for $1,400 okay. for eligible persons. You ain't get a check? I ain't had a stimmy yet. I think I got a check. Yeah, I ain't getting I did. I, I think didn't so. get they nothing. put it in your bank account. You should actually. Yeah, nobody look. gives me nothing. Uh, but you can also get $1,400 for each eligible dependent. So today we're speaking to tax expert Shaquana Brooks to learn more about the smartest ways to use your STEMI check and also your tax refund. Because you know the tax refund and the STEMI check is all sort of coming at the same time. Trying to flip it. And well, people you got to, to flip you got it. to flip that stimmy. Flip it, but it's got to be done legally. <laughs> legally, and, we got to legally flip that stimmy. And I think if there's one thing that uh, we learned from the pandemic is that we cannot not have money, have stash, right? Because people just all yeah. of a sudden were cut off from working. They just didn't have a check, and until. Uh, you know, at that time, it was the Trump administration got it together to say, OK, we're going to start sending out money or that there was going to be unemployment. You had different states with different rules and there was so much happening. There were folks who literally went under during mm -hmm. that time. And I think the thing we learned is that we have to make sure that we are secure enough to make it a few paychecks. Right. Before, right. you know, you, before so you important. run out. So it's nice to have you here. You are Thank our you first. You are our first 
in studio guest. First Thank you. In studio I, guest. I'm so honored. And <laughs> you should be, because because we don't really be liking people. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, so I'm, I'm we got you in our space. I'm, think, I'm, I'm grateful that you guys like me and yes. you have me here. Miss Bennis. <laughs> yes. So Ms. before Bennis. we get into flipping the stimmy, tell people like what is it you do? How did you become successful? Like, give us your little background. My background. A okay. little background? Well, it's a big background. That's right. Yeah. Okay, yes, it's a big background. Mm-hmm. <laughs> big business. Okay, so I started out in big four accounting firm uh, right after college. Before that, my dad owns restaurants um, in Brooklyn, in New York City. I was raised. I've literally been working since I was six years old. Mm. Wow. So <laughs> at this point, I kind of feel like it's time for me to retire. <laughs> um, but I have been working since I was six years old, just in that entrepreneur space. Uh, went to college, studied accounting, decided that I wanted to just really understand what the co- like what corporations knew that we didn't. Mm. How were they moving? What were they doing? How were they able to get for even from a stock perspective, which which is where I started my career out in mutual funds. Then I switched over to real estate, private equity. Just I just wanted to understand what they were doing and what mm. they knew that we didn't. So I stayed there for six and a half years uh, before starting my own tax and accounting company, Brooks Alliance. And at Brooks Alliance, I pretty much have taken the corporate structure on how they approach taxes and accounting and implemented it for small businesses and real Mm. estate investors. It's important. And no one, uh, when I started about three and a half years ago, no one was having the conversation about taxes. Mm. No one. And I was like, everyone's always talking about getting money. But no one's talking about how to save their money. And that's important because, as I like to say, (coughs) the IRS is like your secret. It's like your silent partner. They come in and they take a piece of your your paycheck, but no one questions it. And it's like one of our highest expenses that we're paying. And so, uh, you know, I started Brooks Alliance and it's been three years and it's been amazing. So that's pretty much, you know, my journey and what I do and I just love to have the conversation about finances Mm. because I know that every time I have a conversation with somebody, they're able to have a conversation with somebody else, and that's the way I add value. What do the conversations sound like? Like talk, talk to us. We say, yeah, we need. We're trying to get the couple (laughs) dollars. So conversations. Um, So I meet clients at different stages. I meet a lot of clients when they're just starting out their business, and they may say, "I don't know where to start." And so, you know, what does it mean for me to have a business? I didn't have this in my family. So I'm literally starting from scratch. So Mm. help me out. We're talking about structure, your business structure. What does that mean, right? Everyone, do you need an LLC? Do you need a corporation? If you're going in partnership, what does that look like? What do those terms look like? Mm. Hiring a team, like really getting into a mindset because I feel like we're so trained to just try to do everything ourselves Absolutely. that no one is talking. To, you need a team. You need to consult with people that can help you eliminate a lot of these mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. Because mistakes cost money. Mm. And a lot of people, especially starting out, it's a lot of money that you have to put out and no one is talking about, okay, yeah, you need to hire a team. Yeah. You need to consult with the right people to help you eliminate a lot of those mistakes. Then we're talking about how to effectively operate a business. You need a business bank account, which was a lot of issues that a lot of people were running into during the pandemic when they were giving out all of these loans and (laughs) grants and all of these things. People, businesses weren't structured correctly. No one had business bank accounts. No one filed their taxes. And so now they're running into issues. Yeah, a lot of people really didn't have bank accounts. A lot of people do not have bank accounts. For their um, business. For their business. And a lot of people are not do not have personal accounts. They may have like, you know, maybe like a cash card uh, or something uh, like that. Uh, and so people are really? running it. Really? You would be surprised. You would be surprised how people are not operating or they don't have things in order. But they're doing business. But they're doing business. Hmm. They're operating business on their cash app or, you know... Venmo or things like that. And so when it's time for you to qualify for things and really benefit for the things that's out here, you're not able to qualify. Same thing goes for home loans. When it's time for people to qualify for loans, whether you have a job or whether you're self-employed, you need your taxes. That's the number one thing that they ask for. Mm -hmm. And some people are not filing their taxes. If they are self-employed, it's really a struggle to get them to file their taxes, you know? So I just try to pretty much instill compliance as well as how can we use what we have to help us get ahead? Because until we get to a point where, you know, our financials is going to push us through, 
we need those tax returns. We have to play the game. And to be honest, it really comes down to a lot of paperwork and just knowing yeah. what you need in order to get what you know to get where you're going. So yeah, yeah. and it's funny because I learned you know you know um, I had to pay a tax bill that was massive, um, and I learned bad habits just over many years. But now I'm in a different space. And the thing that I learned is the paperwork you do beginning, I guess, January 1st or whatever the, you know, beginning of your year mm -hmm. is, it's so important to maintain that, keep it up, the receipts, where you're putting them, what type of folders you have, what notes are being written. Even if I spend X amount of dollars on like Zelle or even Cash App Venmo, I make sure to use the note section to remind mm -hmm. myself of what it is because you think you're going to remember and you, you don't. don't remember you don't. where who was this and what <laughs> was it for. And now you've got an accountant looking at you like, I, here's a spreadsheet. <laughs> I need to know what all this is. Yes, yeah, so wow. we do bookkeeping it's... as well. And so that's another thing where people don't understand bookkeeping. And I like to explain it to clients where that's like the foundation of your business. You know, mm. like you have to know what's coming in. You need to know what's going out. That's going to one help you file your taxes at the end of the year, remain compliant, as well as help you make decisions in your business. A lot of people are operating at a loss from when they first start because yeah. they don't even understand how much it costs them to push out a product. Mm. You may be selling a t-shirt and you think because Johnny is selling the t-shirt for $25 that that means that you could sell the t-shirt for $25 too. Your but you're not behind. even, exactly. you know, you're not even taking into account Which is how shipping. much you're shipping, your, yeah, the cost yeah. of your, you know, the t-shirts, the printing, all of there those things. There are so many people who do business like that. Yes. There are so many people who, like I have conversations with people that, well, I'm going to sell it at this and I'm like, okay, so how much do you pay for it? And how much does it cost you to ship it? And how much are you paying when you stay? And they be like, oh, and I'm we like. We were just saying that about Until Freedom. Yeah. Uh, merch. I merch. said, we have to really be attentional. Like, we can't just put, sell merchandise for two dollars more yeah. than we actually bought it because that the two dollar we ain't making no we money we actually money. in the red mm -hmm. so a lot of people don't understand that so we got these we get these um tax refunds mm -hmm. you know we get in these stimulus checks yeah you we know we are not me everybody not else because some reason I, I ain't never had none of that but anyway okay. people are getting these things mm -hmm. how do we flip this how do we make this make money how do we create some wealth, some, you know, some generate some income that could, could be continual. So I think it's important to first be realistic and understand where you are and what's important. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you are a person that wants to start a business, you should go out and start that business. You should form your LLC. You should um, educate yourself because that's another thing. Educating yourself, maybe buying a course, mm. right? That will help you eliminate a lot of those mistakes, mm. get started, and put you in a position where you are able to flip that money. Mm. Um, something else that I think is really important is investing. Mm. And we can do that in a few different ways. Some people don't have that knowledge to actually go out and invest in. Let me the... check and see what's going on with my stuff while y'all yeah, talking yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people, you know, they see stocks and they feel like, oh, my God, I can't invest. But the reality is, if you are if you're drinking a beverage, if you have clothes that those clothes are on the stock, stock market. market, Louis Vuitton wow. is on the stock market. You know, wow. it's important to invest, right? Invest, hold it. Everyone's taking flights. Everyone's flying out. Delta is on the stock market. Every airline is on the stock market, right? So invest in some stocks. I think if, you know, for some people that are just in a position where they're like, okay, well, I don't want to individually just say, okay, I'm going to put, you know, just one, like, I'm just going to pick up one stock with this money. Maybe what you can do is invest inside of a Roth IRA, mm -hmm. right? So that's a retirement account. And it is when you take the money out of it, it's non-taxable. So that is extremely important because again, the IRS is your silent, you know, the, your silent partner and can kill your wealth much faster than a lot of things. Mm. And, you know, if you're paying 30 and 40 percent to the IRS, then guess what? That could have been 30, 40 percent that you're, you know, taking somewhere else. So with the Roth IRA, you get to contribute to that Roth IRA. You can choose, you know, either a bucket of type of stocks or industries that you want to invest in. And then you can have that grow for you. And then when you decide to take it out, you don't have to worry about paying taxes on it. 
if you have debt, maybe paying that debt down. Mm. Debt keeps a lot of people in yeah, the I still race. Got, I, I remember I had like debt from the, the old cable bill that my mother put in my social security. <laughs> <laughs> you know we still, what? Most of the people in the hood are still dealing with the old no, cable that's bill. that's true. For real. And, and when, I'm, when I'm listening to you, right, and I'm one of these people, right, like I have an issue with structure. Okay. Like I'm one of the people that, I'm, I'm very creative. I'm a very creative mind. I, I come up with ideas and thoughts. As soon as you want to sit down and structure it, it's it, it, I have a fear of that. They're polar opposites. And so that's why I always tell people you shouldn't have to be the CEO and accountant in your business. Mm. Because a lot of times, if you're creative, you need space to be creative. Lord have and mercy. the moment that someone Thank tries you. to lock you in, Lord you can't have, think and this operate. Woman is preaching. <laughs> And, this, and I've been saying this for years. Everybody has a different role. I'm not the structured person. I am a creative. My mind cre- So Do you insert yourself? Yes, I insert myself in every process except for just the this nuts the and structure? bolts structure. I don't okay, know. Okay, then that's I, fine. I really get, literally, I get scared of it. Like, it, it no, frustrates no. me. Mm-hmm. Like, it really frustrates me. Like, every time I sit down and I have to structure this creativity, mm-hmm. it really... And there's a lot of us who feel like that, so... No, but for see, me, this, no, no, no. Okay, You're well, not gonna just you can't. skip past it. The problem is that if you are a person, in my judgment, who just wants to be a creative, then you have to take on just a creative role. But when you step into management and say now you're actually running an organization, a company, a show, or this and that, you have to ha- know how to wear multiple hats, unfortunately, because you got to run your business, but right? I you agree. Won't know where, and, but and that's not, not really true because everybody has a different role. I understand. For mm-hmm. me, right, I understand that somebody is better than something that I am. Mm-hmm. And I know what I'm good at. And, most people, and what I'm good at, I'm great at. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I know I'm the best at what I do. I'm, I'm in the top tier of what I do. I can mm-hmm. do that all the time, all the time. Mm-hmm. The things that I don't do... I don't like to venture into yeah, but because there are people who are way better than me. And but, I don't ask people to venture into my space. No, but that's, yeah. but unfortunately, unfor- and you can, you know, of course, correct me if I'm wrong. Unfortunately, that's how most artists, entertainers, and creatives lose money. Because you have to know what's going on with your business. If you don't know the ins and outs of what's happening with your business, you can't just trust even your own family members to just run things. You have to be in the details of business. I agree. You have to understand what's happening. Mm-hmm. Because what you're doing is you don't understand it, so you're deviating away from it. Mm-hmm. If you understood it, then you wouldn't be... No, it's not that fearful. I don't understand it. It's that I don't like it. You don't like it, but That's I feel it. like the... if you understood every single part of it and every single aspect of it... No, I do understand. So I'm, I'm very intelligent. I, I know how to... And that's why they get so angry because I know... why you 15 questions no, the same I, time? That's why no, I he understand. literally... <laughs> what question do, you do want I me to get? Okay, do you want yeah. a real example? Yeah. You sat through all of the insurance calls. Mm-hmm. So you know about the setup of the insurance, how it works, what's going on. I forced you and your brother, our other person that is a lawyer and he's very, he's brilliant. He wants to write and think and do policy and this and that and dream about what the world for black people should be without, you know, separation, our Mm -hmm. own world that we can create. That's what he wants to do. Meanwhile, the paperwork is due tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I need you here. I I need you here, right here with us, getting through this process. And this one over here is like, I'm writing a thing and I got to go to the studio tonight and this and that. And then they check in and go, chicks, y'all good? Y'all got it? All right, good. So he sat through all the calls about the insurance. I made them get on the phone. It was three and a half hours of the day of talking through the steps. When we got off the phone, this, maybe two or three days later, he calls me and says, "So we we have insurance. So what is it? What does it look like? Well, so well, how much? I gotta spend that kind of money. We went through. We chose the plan together. You wrote it off. You just didn't want to deal with it. But I do agree with that. Yeah, he you have So let me to say. let me not even say that you don't understand it. If you applied yourself and paid attention, you'll understand it. But I think that you don't like it so much that you just write it off because it's not your thing. But you have to understand it because guess what? 
if something happens to your business, that insurance is going to come in handy. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people during COVID was able to pull from their insurance Absolutely. because they were not able to make money, yeah. right? Like a lot of people are able to pay into insurance over their lifetime and then pull from it at a cash value and then invest in it or live from off of it at some point, right? So I think that And what about if something happens to one of us? Yes, that's important. Who's too. gonna know where to get the passwords, the information? Like you don't know. Now, thank God, Michelle Richburg, who is our finance person, has it together, okay? And she's got it together for you and for me. <laughs> and, and, because, and because you concluded that, thank you, you just enabled him. That's all I'm trying you to explain to you. Because, that's because the now world. he's like, well, listen, yeah. I don't need to do that because I can just go Yo, to her and she I knows think it. for me, like, I understand what they said because I'm... I, I, I pay You're attention. Into it I more. pay attention enough to know, okay, well I don't the intricate details and all that. I don't I don't micromanage nobody on this stuff, I'm right? The same. I'm the like cause I'm I believe I come to you, I say, yo, we're gonna get this done, and I come to you when you said it's gonna get done, and I say, Is it done? And if it's not, then we have an issue. Other than that, I'm not calling you a thousand times. I'm not trying to figure out when you do it. They do that. They say, My son, I'm did like you do this? <laughs> I said I was gonna do it. I don't need you to call me a thousand times definitely about anything. Does it. Because I get look, she thinks no, no, she no, that's, that's not an actual. Whenever I take on a task, I get my you task get done. done. I don't take on anything that I'm not gonna get done. That's so just not you who I are am. more of the okay, so you guys just operate different. I do. You are more detail oriented. You wanna be in the detail of it, right? You're I a have detail to person. Be. Yep. He is more high level. He's more like I'm a hire who I need to hire and have them give me high level what's going on. I'm both of you, mm -hmm. right? So you have to have both things. I get it. Like I, I'm a detail person, but where I can things I don't have to be in the detail about. Yeah, I totally just kind of well, push yeah, it to and the I mean, side. and, and I, he has you, so and I, and yeah, and, and, I, and, and we take on like he said, which is true. Each one of us has a different role, and that's what makes our team so amazing. That we all have something different that we do. The one thing they want is the little text message that I send every few days. Here's what's in the bank. They want to know that. They want to know how. Who, so and then, the and then, and then they say, and then they say, and why did we spend so? Now that's the other thing. When we hire vendors, our security bill is outrageous, but it has to be because we mm -hmm. live in a time and we deal with situations that are just ridiculous. They never understand why the bill, why is, so the bill is so high, but they want to order. But they, order, want, all, but they want all the things. Well, now nah, he doesn't even care. He's like, I don't need security. I'll fight for myself. We have had many fights about that several times because he says <laughs> that, and then now. and I'm then a, he goes, I'm, "I'm my own security." No, he but, says that, and then he goes, "Where we go somewhere?" He goes, "Where's Hassan? Yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous." I mean, I just we we walking around. We what what what? Like, oh, so you know that's just what they do. Them. They act like they don't know, and then mm -hmm. they know, and it really just just comes down to the fact that in a lot of ways, I believe that men and women operate differently. It's just like women. We run our homes we into the little, yes. little, you light know, bulb. and we know that. And we you understand. See I'm not saying edible. I don't get it. And I think uh, that was actually one of the things as I was going through um, talking about women and just from a financial perspective, I was, you know, just saying the women face financial hardship sometimes because Sometimes women don't want to have the conversation about finances mm. or they overextend themselves. We are overextenders. That's we want we to do. please everybody. We want to know every everything. We want everyone to be able to rely on us. Where men are just like, no. if that gives me a little bit of stress, <laughs> I'm not it. doing it. And we're I'm, just like, all right, we're going to push through this yeah, stress not... and we're going to push through it. We're going to get it all together. So I definitely agree. There's definitely a difference on how men operate. And women operate even financially. So you telling me my stimmy check that it, it, I think I got it. I'm pretty sure I got it because I saw fourteen hundred dollars more mm -hmm. in my bank account than what was supposed to be there, okay, right? So then, yeah, you got and it. so I think I did yeah. get it. Um, so I can't go buy a bag. You telling me to put it in my little LVMH has a stock. By the stock. By the stock. So how do okay? So give me, okay. uh, give me like, cause there are a couple programs that you can. We, you know, I found out a lot of them. Mm -hmm. What a like if you just a regular dude from the hood. You got mm -hmm. your stimmy. You've been working all year. You got a couple dollars. You still got a little check that you work in, but you got a little stimmy. You got mm -hmm. a few thousand dollars. What do I do? What program do I? What app do I get into to look for these things? Like, what is the basic, simple thing that JoJo can do? Jojo. Okay, so first, brokerage accounts. I use uh, Ameritrade. I use Ameritrade, Ameritrade. Um, for my stocks. I do think that there's need to be some education. 
Mm. Right. So you got to learn first. You have to learn, learn first. So find someone that is educating like Wall Street Trapper. That's his whole on Instagram. I'm not sure if you follow him on Instagram, but that's his whole thing where he's like, I want to show the hood that we can invest in stocks, too. And this is how you do it. Like he has a monthly membership membership membership. Right. So you can do that where it's I think it's like twenty seven dollars a month, but you're in this community of investors. And so now it becomes a part of your conversation. And now you're able to say, OK, well, I can do this. And OK, this this person made this play or, you know, got this stock. I'm going to do the same. So sometimes it's it's before you can actually get the results, which I know everybody wants. We live in this microwave society where people are like, okay, I want to invest in stocks and I want to be rich today. But it's really about understanding like the power of stocks because a lot of people don't even understand that. Mm -hmm. So if I was JoJo and I got $1,400, you know, now some people got a lot of money. They got a lot of they kids. Yeah, they got, got a few they kids. They got a few kids, kids yeah. and they got fourteen. They got about 10 racks. I got about right? 10 racks right now. And then you get right 10 now. racks for your, uh, for your, from your tax Taxes, refund. Taxes, so I got 20. So can I take... So if I have ten thousand, mm -hmm. can I split it in half and get my bag with five or four, or three or whatever, oh, and some things? And then my, the no, bag. you know why I'm saying that because I'm just being real. Because you're being realistic. I'm being realistic, and I know that if you're make, if you're forcing me to take my whole ten thousand dollar check to make and more invest money. it, Whoa. I get wow. it. No, but I'm saying in my situation, Whoa. Whoa is me. I have grown to a whole different place because I've been through enough to understand, and I got bags galore, so I don't need to think about that. So I am invested because I have a stash app. Um, and when I see things going on, I am moving my money around. And Airbnb, by the way, has actually been doing really, really well yes. for me. Really well. So, to be clear. <laughs> but I also have, I, I come from a time, and I have friends, cousins, family members, and I know that if I tell them to take their whole $10,000 check and go invest it, they're to not going to do it. 20000 And more than wow. likely, and more than likely, because of the pressure of the whole 10000 they start thinking of this and that. And, 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 and then the next thing you know, they did nothing. They didn't invest anything. So I want to mm -hmm. give realistic advice. If you've got $10,000 you're sitting on, if you got $5,000 you're sitting on, take $1,500 and blow it doing whatever it is you want. But make an investment of $3,500 or $5,000 or whatever and go and do something. I think people can do that. I think what she's saying is right. I feel like when you make things, and pe make uh, people feel that they can obtain things, they do it. It's kind of breaking it down in bite sizes. You can't take someone that's used to getting money and blowing it to then saying, hey, take this whole 10000 and just put it My son doesn't blow stock. money, so he doesn't understand. You don't understand it, that. He See, money your mind... Don't waste <laughs> money at all. See, but you... <laughs> But listen. Yeah, I came from the bottom. Like, all the way zero, and I did prison time, so I know dudes that's in jail that beg you for soup that costs mm -hmm. 10 cents. They don't have nothing. nothing. So I've seen absolutely destitution. <laughs> so no, for, for me you're to not just gonna waste money. I'm just not gonna do it. It's gonna make sense. If I buy something, I can buy three of them. Like I don't mm -hmm. that's just my but mindset. Most people don't think like that, and yeah. that's what you have to understand. Right. Most people are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And some of the time it is because of bills, but a a lot of the time also People out here, they're eating out all the time. Mm -hmm. They're popping bottles. They are buying popping bags. Popping bottles is they expensive, are, it is Doc. Expensive. Like, sure. Jesus. It is expensive. I, I, I don't do we that. Only if I'm going outside with, 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 with guys. Guys like to yeah. pop bottles. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Um, but yeah, you know, so a lot of the time, you know, people are wasting a lot of money. So you do have to be realistic. And you can't just say, oh, if you're going to take your 10000 and make it twenty, People don't see it like that. They're like, do. I'm gambling. I may not be able to flip this 10000 because, again, you're entering an arena you know nothing about. Mm -hmm. So if you don't see the value, let's say, in stocks or even if somebody may want a house, if you get $10,000, if you get an FHA program, sometimes that's enough for a down payment for a house. Mm -hmm. But some people aren't looking at it like that, right? So... Yeah, she's perfect. Because I, 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 I can see my Neverfull yeah, sitting see right here. My Neverfull is sitting right here. My new Louboutins <laughs> yes. is right here. And I'm going to look cute. And I need to and, do it for the gram. Yes. And I might be able to flip it because when I put my Neverfull <laughs> and my new Louboutin shoes on, that I might meet somebody that's, that's got the ability me. to get me to the 10000 so I can get so And on mindset. that note. <laughs> and on that Thank note. Thank you and very on that much. Note. You're welcome. Yes. So what I would say is um, figure out 
let's say in your in your example where you're like, okay, the person got ten thousand. Maybe take twenty percent of it, do something that you want to do. Yeah. And then take the eighty percent and really and really invest okay. it. Because and I think again, you have to really understand where you are. And I think being realistic with, with, with um yourself is very important. Are you ready to invest? Mm. If you're not, then maybe you should just kind of put your money to the side until you it only takes until fifty dollars. I know. So, but I listen, know, but this has been great, and and yes, we can and we stay can and talk all, all day because day. there's so many little questions and ins and outs. But how do people contact you mm -hmm. if they want to work with you? They need some support. I think the biggest thing for me has been, like you said, the educational piece. I I, I shied away from it for so long. One because I wanted to blow my money. I wanted to buy. You know, as soon as I got came into. $3,000, I wanted to go buy $600 worth of makeup and, you know, a new yeah. pair of shoes and this and that. I need, I wanted that. That's what made me feel validated in the moment. But as I became more educated, especially when I got my tax bill and when some other things happened to me and also when and during 2018, 2019, I tell the story all the time. I had to ask people for money to help bail me out of a situation. But yet I was making big money and just spent, like you said, dinner, this, that, just not thinking. Now... I don't play no games. Like, it's a different situation. But the education that I went through with the folks who I finally allowed in, they were always around. But I didn't want them to see how bad the situation was. Mm -hmm. And I also didn't want to listen because I knew it was going to take a sacrifice. And you wasn't ready. Yeah. Again, being real with yourself and knowing where you were at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, um, in regards to reaching out to me uh, across all platforms, Miss Business 101. Miss Business 101. Miss <laughs> yes. Business. There's no such spelling. Miss Business. Miss Business. Miss Business. Miss <laughs> Business. Yes. Business. So, Miss Business 101 across all platforms. That's also my website, Miss Business 101. Okay. Um, if you reach out to me on any of my social media platforms, you can email me, DM me. I will get back to you. Great. Ms. Well, Business we appreciate you. Thank Shaquana you Brooks, right. a.k.a. Miss Benny. <laughs> she out here doing her thing. We appreciate you. I'm going to take a lot of that that you took. I'm going to invest in my stimmy you, you that invest, I ain't got. Invest your stimmy that you ain't got. And my stimmy. Be a part of the meeting. I'll be yes. trying. I'm a part the of the meeting. meeting. Don't listen to that because I'm a part of the meeting. <laughs> I just know my role. I don't have a problem playing my role. I'm good at what I do, and I'm not good at what I don't so do. So you don't want to. I learn to piece by piece. I come to the meeting, okay. right? I'm at the meeting. I'm listening. I'm saying. Sometimes I check out when it ain't my part, though. But when it's my part, I'm all in. And the thing is, they want to interfere with my part too. Mm -hmm. See, that ain't gonna they work. Have to. That's the women. Nah, that's, that ain't that's gonna work. Women. Cause it's I don't interfere important. with yours. No, no, no. It's very important. Well, thank you, Miss Venice. Thank we appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so thank much, you. Street Politicians. Thanks for being our first in first studio in studio guest. guest. <laughs> You're getting a little, little, little bit better. At what? At the stuff we were just talking to Shaquana oh, about. Well, listen, I'm great. No. You know what I'm saying? I know what I'm doing. You're getting a little bit better. You're getting a little better at letting me do my own thing. That's true. I stay out of your merch business. That's the business. thing. You so notice when people that? do their own thing. But you then... notice that I stay out of it completely. But that's only because I left Julianne Hoffenberg in the middle of it. And so I know that there's the same type of management that's happening. That's Julianne what Hoffenberg calls me and says, hey, I need this done. Yeah. It gets done. I call her. And we have a, a business relationship that works for us. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't right. micromanage me. Uh -huh. And she it works. Should. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to Shaquana. <laughs> Shaquana what, you know, Brooks. She brought us, showed she us how to flip. Miss Bennett. I mean, basically the thing I learned from what she said, which we already know, is that this is the time of engaging in the market, right? Yeah. If you have money in your hand, you need to be investing. You need to be getting your LLC, or building paying out off your debt. business, paying off debt, doing mm -hmm. things that will help you to be more financially secure. I think most people will say, well, we were never taught and we don't know, but there's so much information about this now. We do know, but yeah. we're choosing to ignore the things that we should be doing because we have bad habits that so many of us have settled into. A lot of people are just scared of doing something new. Right. You know, when you start talking about money and you start talking about big words and you say stock market, they think it's just this far off planet. Yeah. You know, that's true. they think it's like, no, nah, I can't do that because rich people do that. I'm right. just a regular person. So you, you have to really start.
breaking it down from nuts to bolts so they can feel comfortable in doing it. So I think we're in that era right now. We're in the stage of doing that right now. Yeah. And saying that, we have another guest. Yes. Well, no, is, really. Because because for our next guest, yeah. I think one of the things that will make people more comfortable is helping our children. Like mm-hmm. starting with them being really, really small. Because even you know when I look at my child, the one thing about him is that he, at 22 years old, he doesn't really ask for money. He takes care of himself. He pays his bills. But he also doesn't understand it the way I feel. Like he goes to the club, they 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 you know pop bottles, and then when it's rent time, you could tell he hustling yeah. it up, doing what he got to do, trying to figure it out, right? Yeah. And so that's some. But these are skills that you learn as a, that you should learn as a kid. You put your important things away and then use whatever is left over. So. Today, we have Today. somebody that will talk to us about the children and what we should be teaching them. I love this book. Like, That's you, dope. You know, this yes, like yes. Larry the Lending Lion, Money and Finance Lessons for Kids. By Aisha Ho, who is a very good friend of mine. She is dope. She's formerly incarcerated like myself. Oh, okay. And she came home hitting the ground running. And mm. she's done. she does so many different things. But this is one of her many feats. Wow. So we're going to have her talk about this book and her journey and all the things that she's doing for the community. She's also an activist. Uh, she's an she, entrepreneur. She, she, she. she does so many different things. No, so Aisha, how are you doing today? Aisha, we appreciate you. I, I have uh, long respected and appreciated what it is that you are contributing to society. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank y'all. Thank you for having me. Like, I'm honored. I love you. Oh, I love you, you know, too. Um, I definitely look up to you, your courage. You know, I think that it's amazing. My son, you already know, my friend, my brother. That's right. I really respect what y'all do. Thank so this is so an honor much. to even be here. Yes. yes. Um, and You are um, our second in-studio guest. Second ever oh, in-studio yes. wow. guest that we've ever had. Oh, I'm special. Okay. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, this this was a very, this is probably the most important thing that I've done so far mm. um, since I've been home. Mm. Um, How long has it been since you've been home? I've been home three years. Okay. I've been out of the halfway house for a little over two years. That's right. And how long were you in college? Ready to give ten years. Them, okay, ten years. give them a little. Yeah, give them a little background, <laughs> so you know, okay. so they can see all the greatness that you do. Okay, thank you. Well, I did ten years in in federal prison, okay. and um, the reason I went to prison is I was charged with conspiracy to commit wire fraud, mm. and um, I had a company. I was very young. I was twenty four, and um, I got involved in the trade business. And what I learned was that in private placement trading, that um, there's not a lot of African Americans, and the requirements to enter those trades are like unrealistic, $100 million, $50 million. That's the net worth that you have to have Mm. to get in. You can spend $100 if you want once you get in, Mm. but they don't let you in unless you have a certain net worth. So how much is it? Anywhere from 50 million to 100 million. Jesus. So you know who's getting in there. You know, Mm. there's a small class of people that are getting into those (coughs) trades and it's just not fair. So what I did um, was I took clients and I linked them with, you know, hedge fund managers or people who had very high end assets um, and they shared the assets on paper. So now when you get to the trade door and they're like, well, I'm sorry, we know you want to come in here and spend, you know, a million dollars, but if you're not worth a hundred million, you can't get in. And now they were able to say, I am worth a hundred million because Mm -hmm. I connected them with people who were. Mm -hmm. The problem and the way I got in trouble is that process took a while. So people who were anxious, you know, I changed the paperwork so that they could get in faster. And that's Mm -hmm. where I messed up. Um, But, you know, in the scope of things, it wasn't something that I should have gotten 10 years for. Who taught you how to do it? I taught myself. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I taught myself. Um, And, um, you know, I was very young. And like I said, I made $10 million. Mm. Um, I didn't expect to. It was something that came to me, like, just from, you know, different relationships with people and being in the mortgage business at one time. So I got lucky, I guess, in being able to learn that. But what I was taught was self-taught. And I wish that I had more financial education younger. You know, they didn't teach about credit because this is a credit driven business. And they didn't teach about credit and commodities, which is the actual thing that's traded, mostly comes from Africa. Mm. So I did a lot of business in Africa, a lot of business in Sierra Leone. Mm. And most of that business is run by run by European companies. And, (coughs) you know, it's not really something that we're a part of. But we are the creators of it because it comes from our land. So it's it's a very interesting thing. And uh, I wanted to, after being in prison, you know, uh, coming home, I came into like 
scamming was huge. And I realized that a lot of people aren't just criminal minded. They want things. They want tools to be able to live a better life. Mm. And they don't really know how to go about it. So they do it the wrong way or the fast way. But they're not bad people. So this book that I wrote, Larry the Linden Lion, is to teach children about um, financial responsibility um, and learning how to manage their money, what it means to have good credit, what it means to have bad credit. And I've read this book um, to five and six year olds and there's a quiz in the back and they get it because mm. it's rhyme, it's very, it rhymes, it's very simplified. And it just teaches them that if you borrow, you have to pay it back. But if you pay it back, you earn points. And those points can make, will make people trust you to lend you money so you can do the things that you want to do responsibly. But it sounds um, like I could send this to a 25 year old. <laughs> I mean, some right? of these 25 year olds need and that you same lesson. Sometimes you got to start here. You can. It's yeah. true. It's, is it like money for dummies, like type of kinda. thing, in a way? Not kind you know, obviously. for young I mean, Kind for of. You. Like, you know, I can I can give you a little piece of it. Yeah. It, yeah it, it's a really piece. a quick read, mm -hmm. but um, it rhymes. So it starts off, mm -hmm. you know, in you the town. Of, <laughs> <laughs> and it helps with retention, the rhyming. So, yeah. Uh, in the town of Moneyville, right next to a lake, Larry the London Lion owns a penny bank. Early every morning, Larry proudly wakes up. He brushes his mane, puts on his chain, then gets inside his truck. When an animal borrows one penny, they have to pay back ten. Trusting that someone will pay you back is what it means to lend. Two pennies cost 20 cents. Four pennies cost 40. But not every animal pays back what they borrow. Some of them are naughty. Mm -hmm. So it teaches them about interest. Mm -hmm. um, and then it goes into the definition of interest. It goes into the definition of what it means to lend. And Larry's going on this journey to try to collect the money that he gave to the animals in the community that weren't paying back. And they all have these excuses. And the one in here is um, Greedy the Frog. Greedy the Frog borrowed 10 pennies, and that was a big amount. He owed the lion so much money, Larry the Lion lost count. Don't worry, said Mr. Greedy the Frog. Take my wallet. It's 10 pennies I checked. Well, 10 pennies are not enough. Remember, you owe me interest. Mm. Interest, he asked. I don't understand. Why don't you come back tomorrow? Interest is when you pay me back more than what I let you borrow. So mm. at the end of the book, when I ask children the questions, what is interest? When you borrow more than they originally gave you, mm. like they really get the concept. When and you then pay back more. When you pay, I'm sorry, when you pay back more than mm -hmm. what you originally mm -hmm. borrowed. Mm -hmm. And they really get the concept. And then there's a game that I created in the back that parents can play with their children. And they use pennies. And they have to do different things in the house or wherever. They have to like, you know, they can take... They borrow 10 pennies and then they can buy, you know, a lemon, they can buy a cup, they can buy sugar, and then they have to go sell it and pay the bank back. Wow. And it teaches them, you know, um, some entrepreneurial yeah, skills. Yeah, 25 year old. <laughs> yeah, these kids need this. She said, she said from 5 to 25. <laughs> No, this is dope. Yeah, so. being being an author mind. myself, mm -hmm. yes, you know, you and having having the same similar outlook, you know, the fact that it rhymes definitely is something that helps with retention. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely a skill that people need to understand about borrowing and about the value of money. You know. Yeah, you know? definitely. And I think it will help um, a little bit if I can help one kid, you know, not go to prison like I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I had the right intention, um, but I did it the wrong way. Yeah. And I think that if I had more knowledge. This is a little bit of um, financial morals also. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just take money and, and think that if it's not yours, that you just get to keep it and not pay it back. Wow. You know? And they need to understand that because right now, you know, it's in music, you know, scamming this. And, and people think that's okay. And it's really not because it affects the community, especially yeah. our community. So I think that it's a very important book. And um, Do you suggest that parents read the book with their children? Absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely, because the game is interactive. And parents have to also understand that there's an emotion attached to money that we mm. teach. So mm. when we're like, ah, these bills, you know, you're teaching kids a negative way to look at money mm. when you always complain about it. Mm. So we have to have positive talks about money and make money be a part of, you know, our our lifestyle, like mm. other communities do. Mm. Like, it, y there's certain vocabulary that we don't even use mm. that gets used in other homes, you know? And then they expect us to understand. We don't, mm. because money is cultural, you know? It so is. it's important that a book like this, and there wasn't one, because I looked to see if there were any other similar books, you know, because I wanted mine to stand out, and I couldn't mm. find any wow. that were like this. Wow. And geared towards us. So, hey, so you, you also focus on credit repair. Yes, yes, you know? I do. And um, I actually have a credit repair company, The Real Credit Pro, and the way I started it was when I came home, um, I was so broke. I lost everything. And a lot of the girls that I was locked up with, I made a promise to help them. So I would be sending $25 money orders, $10. It was like not really much. And my friend was like, girl, you need to get yourself together first. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. 
But what helped me was getting my credit together. Mm. So I'm like, you know what? Rather than me giving them money when they come home and stuff like that, I can help them get their credit right so they can get their own money. And that's where we started doing it. And then it just grew from there. Wow. You know? Yes, sir. So. You can be within a circumstance and then use that dark cloud to make sunlight for That's the world. Right. That's and right. it's just so important for people to constantly see their lives in that way that your dark moments are actually a blessing to other mm -hmm. people if used properly. Because, you know, we know people. Mm -hmm. They come home from prison. They come home from different situations, out the hospital with the surgery, and they're angry. They're yeah. evil. Mm -hmm. They don't, they un unapproachable. Mm -hmm. But you're doing things. That's why I said I really have you know, respected the journey and what it is that you're doing because I have, after meeting my son and Jamila T. Davis and a few of the other people that I work with, I started to uh, un to see a different side of people coming home mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I didn't see before. I mean, my, my brother, he's definitely a very positive person who's, you know, I thank God for that. But most of the people that I meet that come home, it's like they're really in a dark funk. They're really struggling. They have not figured out while being inside what it looks like to sort of flip their lives. Like they yes. haven't figured that out. And, they, and it's like they're coming out. And what I, I think I, I have learned from you, my son, and from Jamila and others is that the time when you're inside, you're supposed to be trying to figure out like what does life look like on mm -hmm. the other side of those those fences, gates, or what have you. But a lot of people don't do it's that. It's hard. Yeah, because it's a lot hard. of people get so caught up in, you know, a false reality, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you're sitting in cell, you can make, you can write the biggest things down on paper. <laughs> I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna get this job, and I'm gonna make 10000 a week, and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get me my house, and I'm gonna have a wife, and, and all of those things, they write this on the paper, they right? They do. They don't, they, but they don't plan for that not to happen. So what happens is when you come home and you don't get the job, immediately people go right back to what they normally did. Right. Say, nah. mm -hmm. And they have expectations, especially when you leave the streets with $10 million and all that, and you come home and you don't have nothing. It's hard. Mm. It's hard. You're surrounded by people that expect you to have this, and they know that you used to do things illegal, so they come back to you with the same mind state. Mm. And it's easy to fall into that mm -hmm. if, you haven't, if you haven't prepared your mind that, look, there's no way I'm going back to prison, and there's no way that I'm giving up. So those have to be two things that you prepare. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. and when you come home with that mind state, and I told people, because I used to teach reentry programs, and I said you have to be prepared to fail in order to be successful. Wow, mm -hmm. That's you got to come home and say, yo, this might not work. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a rapper. I can't. I left with a million dollar record deal. Everybody's, oh, you gonna go home and be fans? I said that might not happen. And if it don't, I'm okay with that. Whatever the steps is gonna take for me to make sure that I regain, keep my freedom, and then. If I have to gradually grow to do that, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And it, it was hard because a lot of people say, oh, you washed up, you ain't got this, wow. and you ain't this person, and such and such mm -hmm. got this, why you ain't got that? And then you had to hear that. I mean, it, it's definitely not easy. I mean, even right now, I'm dealing with a situation where I was almost finished with probation. I had um, just until June. Mm -hmm. And um, the my boyfriend, who is also um, an ex-offender, a felon, um, we're not supposed to be together because we're both felons. That's like against the rules. And I didn't tell them because wow. you can't help who you love, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, he got violated as well. They came into the home and I was there and they called my PO and um, I got violated. So wow. probation was supposed to end for me. Not only did it not end, it was extended for two additional years. Wow. And I have a bracelet on. A you bracelet? Know? A bracelet. A well, bracelet. let me see that. What a bracelet. That? Wow. And that's for being with a felon. And, you know, I don't think that's fair because the number of men, our men that are felons is so outrageous. Yeah. You know, yeah. and my father yeah. was a felon. My brother was a felon. And just in case, you know, we want to catch you up, well, boom. That's something so easy to almost violate anybody with. So Wow. Dang. Yeah. Just that, that just happened. That just happened. Wow. Just happened. Mm -hmm. So close. So and, close. I mean, in our communities, like, I'm trying to think. Outside of one man, maybe two that I've been with in my entire you know life, I, all of the men that I have dated or been with, they all have a record. They all are either wow. convicted felon or, you know, they at least have done state time. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, these are some of them. It's for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Some of them, it could be you know something but two white extra collar, years? two extra years, well, and yeah, after that's you crazy. did ten and a half years, so ten and a half just because you loved the man who was formerly in car, he ain't in jail now. 
Formerly, he's home. Wow. No, on he parole. is. He was violated, but his violation got him locked up. So. But oh, but he got wow. violated the day. Oh, that same day. You was yeah. in the house with wow. him. Y'all chilling home. Mm-hmm. Y'all trying to change your life around. Y'all doing positive things, mm-hmm. and they come in and they take him, violate him, and then violate you and give you two extra years. Two wow. extra years, you know, which Lord. affects business, everything. That's why I respect Aisha's yeah, I do. resilience. Mm-hmm. Her people like Hundred Miller, like when you watch them. She came straight home when I first met her. She was do she does music. She was in a club. She had this energy and she kept doing music. And I just loved the way that she moved with herself. Mm-hmm. And I seen her constantly. She did the books. Pushing. You know, mm-hmm. she had liquor. Whatever it is, she was an entrepreneur. You're pushing. She, she pushing. kept but on. But you're not pushing. going back to work for the white man. Oh, never. Let me tell you something. I read this book. It's called Wake of the Wind. And I had a new respect for I always put, you know, my people in high regard. But this book was about when slavery was over mm. and how we was in the woods, people were dying from snake bites, women were running around. I haven't seen my child in six years. They look like this. I mean, it was just chaos. Mm. And it, I connected with that coming home from prison. Wow, you know, wow, People wow. have so many expectations of people coming out of prison, but we were just literally slaves. It is a slave system. It and is. you're just freely released. And it's like, go ahead, go, shoo, figure it you out. You were not a slave. You were enslaved. Enslaved, that's right. You that's were right. enslaved, but that's you right. were not a slave. I mean, that's how you feel. That's how you feel. You know, that's feel. how you feel. Yeah. You can't, you know, and to come home, especially if you were successful before, and people just expect so much of you and you're really starting over. And that, this book, you know, it just, it just resonated with me because mm-hmm. we were in such a bad, people, you're free now. What does that mean? You know, I still have to be able to build myself back up after I've been torn down for a decade. So it's not easy, especially for women who are mothers. You know, a lot of times fathers incarcerated, the children are with the mother. Mm. But imagine being a woman, you know, and you don't have children. I don't have children. I don't have children. And, you know, I, that was all, that was an issue for me when I was away. I'm like, you know, will I have time to meet somebody and maybe have children? You know, there's a lot that women deal with um, who are incarcerated. Mm. So this is very important to me. Very passionate. So you know, you're open it. to partnerships with the white man, but you ain't trying to go to the job every day and put the chick chick in, right? No, 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 no. You don't? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. No. This, like, not even... Um, because we have to, In order to build up a good community, we have to build up our our mindset of taking care of ourselves mm, and not being dependent I love that. for I people love that. who really don't want to see you win anyway. Because us winning, you know, in their minds represents them losing. So they don't want to see you win. So you know? where can so people buy this book? They can buy it on Amazon. Buy it on Amazon. And Amazon. you can also buy it at LarryTheLendingLion.com. LarryTheLendingLion.com. Mm-hmm. And that's more f- directly from you, or is it self-published? Yeah, it's self-published. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Dope. So yeah, cool. This is amazing. Thank this you so dope. much. Really, it is. And it's dedicated to my, my brother, and he was killed by the police. It's dedicated to my father. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was murdered, you know, um, who told me, you know, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. They're at the forefront of my mind. So yeah. I just want to shout them out. I always do. God well, we, I want to say thank you. And, you know, you are very inspirational. Like I always tell you, you do. constantly you see do. you moving. <laughs> She'll text me, oh, bro, I see you. And I'll be like, yo, I'm proud of you. You mm-hmm. know, and it's, it's a real authentic relationship that we have. And I really appreciate you. Continue to do what you do. Yes, you know, you, you always have my support. And um, we just proud of you, man. Yes, Thanks and shout out my here. sister Miller. Oh, yep. yes, shout yes, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And thank so. you for being the second in-studio guest for Street special. Politicians. Yes, yes. Okay. go get the book, Larry the Linden Lion, yes. Aisha Hall, the entrepreneur, the winner. She yes. Wins. Keep going. Thank Peace. you. Thank, thank you. And that brings me to my... I don't get it. <laughs> You know, it's a lot of things I don't get. I think, but this week, you know, us losing one of the greats, you know, and seeing negative, some negative things from just news outlets, mm. you know, about how DMX loses houses since he's been rapping in the last couple of years, or, you know, Kobe Bryant, there was negativity that came up. It's like, why is it that, especially these media outlets, choose to try to bring up negativity about someone when they pass away or they, no, they just they the, the, listen the you talking about the new york post they bring up negativity about the living the dead whoever they just racist period wow post is yeah they definitely have horrible every time there's something negative it's in the post and i think you know people got to stop buying stuff that don't support us and doesn't show us in a you know in a proper light man anytime that 
somebody like DMX, what he's meant to this culture, even through you know his ups and his downs. But and and he's in, you know he's in a position where he's in critical condition, and you decide to put out an article about homes that he's lost. You know I just don't even understand what brings you to there. What is the mindset that goes with that? You know and and, and it happens with a lot of our people that we love. You know a lot of our superstars and our icons. When they pass, there's some media outlet that tries to find a way, you know, to highlight negativity that they've been through. Mm. You know, and I think we 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 got to stop supporting it. We got to stop even allowing it to happen. Hmm. Well, I think that's been an issue for Black folks. The way we're covered in the media, it is really problematic in general. Not just when we pass, but throughout our entire existence. Like, there's never been a time when the media has properly represented our stories. Even in the moments when they're celebrating us, um, there's still always either something problematic and or it's very short-lived. There's no commitment, loyalty, dedication to our stories. It's just about the, you know, pick it a draw. So today's a good day. Tomorrow we'll lie on you. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll have three days apart, a great story, and then l allow somebody to write an opinion piece that's like saying something that they haven't even verified. So it's, the media is very, very dangerous in that way. And I guess um, it, bring, it, it makes me think about how important two things are. One, for us to financially support black media. So, you know, people like a Roland Martin and Others out here, even subscribing to our show, it helps to keep the media, the black media that's telling our stories in the ways in which you want. You know, it helps to keep us um, uh, just, I don't want to say courageous, that's not the word, but I think it just keeps it authentic, to yeah. your point, right? The Black Effect Network, you know, making sure you support things that they're doing and all the different shows that Charlemagne has now launched um, through his network, his platform, um, you know, and, and again, there are people who have, you know, real subscription based models where they are actually giving us good information. Again, I'm not talking about people that their entire time is negative about who ain't doing what I'm talking about people who are actually doing the work and also speaking and sometimes critiquing things that need to be critiqued. So I think one is definitely, um, you know, support black media. But I think the second thing is um, that black media has to do a better job of telling the stories themselves, of doing the research, of using the context to get to the person who knows the thing. Because unfortunately, what the black media is doing is copying and pasting what they see on other outlets and then they just put the story out there. Well, I ain't People, gonna lie, some of the problems with was black media. Oh, absolutely. Especially in Kobe's situation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the way that well, black media representation is different from black media. Okay. You got it. It's very different. I'm i I'm talking about with black media networks. Okay. I had to contact three or four people that are my people. Like, we are cool and close. Hang out. Talk all the time. And I'm like, why are you running this story about me? That I, And by the way, they ran other stories about things that, you know, different issues that people had with me that I didn't call them at all because it's the news and that's going to happen. But in this particular situation, they were running stories about what somebody said about me and nobody actually called me. I didn't say don't run the story because you can't do that. That's not integrity. I didn't say don't run it. I said, did anybody on your team, the one that saw me in the office or, or knows we go to dinner, just think to call me and say, hey, what's your perspective? Do you not even get that opportunity? So it makes, it diminishes the value of even black press when they don't do real work. And I know the budgets are low. Cause so the two things, that's why I said these are two points. Because they'll say the researchers and all the things that the bigger entities have, they can't afford. So they end up being cut and paste journalists. And that's not real journalism. Our legends and our icons should be able to die with respect, mm -hmm. you know, and overcome their shortcomings, if, especially if they've done the work to move past them. So no media, and especially not black media, should be covering us in that light. Yeah. And if they do, 
<laughs> Block. <laughs> Buck. So that brings us to the end of another episode of Street Politicians. We want to thank y'all for joining us. Always love the number one show, number one number podcast, one. Number, number one in the one. world. So if you have any suggestions, if you have any topics you wanted to talk about, just hit us up, man. Listen, I'm not going to always be right. <laughs> Tamika, maybe she won't always be wrong. But we will both always be authentic. I actually laugh when I hear that. It's, it's the truth. Funny. It's funny. Peace. It's the truth. Because you're going to be wrong most of the time. Not all of the time. Sometimes. Oh. Not, not about this Oh, one. yeah. Oh, get this right now. Oh. That's how we own it. That's how we own it.